If you're needing gift ideas, whether for the holiday season or birthday or any other holidays throughout the year, you may want to consider using some unique ideas straight from your garden. We know that people love homemade canned goods like unique jellies or relish blends, but besides that, there are lots of other things that you can do to be able to gift from your garden that the people in your life will love. Today I'm going to talk to you about three different categories of DIY gift ideas, starting out with simple herbs and spices, going through to herbal teas and blends like that, and then finally some body care and skincare products. First, the easiest thing that you can do for gifting from the garden is just to choose single spices and herbs. I've got oregano here. And let me tell you, you may think that this is no big deal because you can go buy oregano and basil and these other things at the store, but nothing compares to homegrown. It's fresher and you are grinding it yourself and the people that you gift these to are going to notice the difference. So I'm starting out with dried oregano and then today I'm also doing dried basil. Now when I dry these, I don't grind them right away. I just put them in the jar the way that they are and then when I get ready to need to use them, whether it's for my spice cabinet, my pantry, or to gift, then I'm going to dry. And then I'm going to put them in cute little jars. I had a friend who actually gifted me some of these and so I'm gonna gift them back full of these homegrown herbs and spices. But you can get creative with what kind of container you use. This is just what we're gonna to use today. Let's go ahead and grind up the oregano and the basil. So for the oregano and the basil, I'm actually going to use my mortar and pestle, which it's one of my favorite Christmas gifts I've ever received. This makes grinding the herbs that we're using real easy. And then a bonus is you get to smell the herbs while you're doing it. Let's start out with the oregano. When grinding oregano, I'm not hoping for a real fine powder because the way that we use oregano, we normally use them more as you know flakes, not real big flakes, but don't feel like you have to make it into a real fine powder. So when it gets the consistency that you want, now I'm gonna put it into the spice jar. tell you just smelling this you're not going to be able to replicate this from anything at the store now this next step is really important and that is to label it so you can do any kind of labels that you want get creative with it if you're the crafty type or you can just buy some labels and handwrite it like I did but I'm gonna put that label here so I've got oregano there and next we're gonna do basil same process The only difference with basil is that I usually like to get it a little bit more fine when I'm grinding it. And if you have any like large stems in here, you can you know pick those out if needed. All of these were dehydrated using a dehydrator. All of these herbs and spices were dried using the dehydrator. You can see the Excalibur behind me is the one that I use. I will say that I had a cheaper dehydrator, but I ran through two motors because I dehydrate so much and the Excalibur has been great. Worth all you spend on it. It's definitely an investment. Perfect. Now we've got our basil. So now we have two single herbs, perfect for gifting. Now let's move on to a couple of spices. Today I'm gonna to be doing cayenne pepper and chili powder. And if you recall from a previous video, I show you how I grew the peppers for these and then how I dried them. And you may recall that I keep them like the herbs, I keep them in jars, not dried, not ground up yet. So for these, they're gonna be harder to grind in a mortar and pestle. So I'm going to use a dedicated coffee grinder that I don't grind coffee with anymore. I just use it for herbs and spices. So let's get this cayenne pepper and the chili powder ground up and we'll do the same thing with the jars here. Here we have 
have these single herbs and spices, but you can also play around with herb blends such as ranch seasoning or fajita seasoning or anything that you particularly like. Maybe you have a homemade taco seasoning or something like that. You can do the same thing, just using anything that you have grown in your garden. And then if you have an ingredient that you didn't grow in your garden, no big deal. It's still a really neat idea to do these individual seasonings that people may not buy for themselves or even know how to use on their own without you telling them about it. And then you can also include a recipe if you'd like. Moving on from the herbs and spices, you can also use many of those same things for herbal teas. If you have a tea drinker that you want to gift, you can do something as simple as just taking a single herb like peppermint. Peppermint is my favorite tea to use with upset stomach or anything like that. Headaches, sometimes peppermint will do well. And I'll tell you that, again, homemade, homegrown, herbal teas are going to be so much more potent and more flavorful than anything you buy in the grocery store. They are fresher and they are going to work better. So even if you don't want to worry with the blends that we're gonna be talking about, you can just do one such as peppermint and then you can just put it in a container like this, make sure and label it. And you can also do something simple like Lemon balm. Lemon balm is another tea that you can just drink on its own. And then you can just put them in just a tin like this and label it. Another thing you can do is look at your favorite herbal tea blends. Maybe you want a relaxing tea blend and you can combine chamomile maybe that you have grown in your own herb garden and lemon balm or even lavender. These three are really good calming herbs and mixed together in a tea blend, they can be the perfect tea to be able to drink on a cold winter night. And this would be a perfect gift. You can also use something like dried elderberries. If you have your own elderberries, you have the elderberries or you might even have elderflower. So really there's no limit to what you can use. If you like herbal teas, then you can use what you've grown and this would be a great gift idea. Now, one other thing that I have done in the past that I've really enjoyed is doing different tea blends based on different symptoms. So we're doing cold and flu season. You may want, this one is my favorite one. It's called Sore Throat Antidote Herbal Tea, and it has sage, marshmallow root, and licorice root. Now, I do grow marshmallow, but I don't grow licorice, so you may have to supplement with something you get at the health food store. But what you wanna do, especially if you're doing a blend like this, is make sure and list the ingredients. That way the recipient knows that if they you know, are taking any medications, they may wanna look up and make sure that there's not any contraindications there. But I know in the past, I've taken some of these blends and I'll link a blog post where I got a lot of these and I've just gifted them all together. So if they have a cold, this tea would be good for it. If they have a sore throat, this tea, or if they have a cough, this tea. So you can really be creative and use what you have that you've grown from your garden. The last gift ideas I wanted to share with you today are actually some of my favorite, partly because I love to use them so much and so I love to gift them. And that is some kind of herbal salve. And the first one is one that I've been doing for a long time. It's the simplest thing that you can do. It does take just a little bit of extra time, but it's a cayenne pepper rub. And I get this recipe from, this was my first ever purchase of any kind of herbal medicine type book and it's called uh, Medicinal Herbs. And the recipe is in here and all you need is olive oil, a tablespoon of cayenne powder flakes. So what I would do for this one is I would put these in my coffee grinder like you just saw me doing, but I wouldn't grind them to a powder. I would just make sure they were like flakes instead of powder, it'll make it much easier to strain. And then an eighth a cup of beeswax and then a few drops of wintergreen essential oil. So what this rub does is it's really good for aching joints and muscles. I've given this as a Christmas gift for many years and people will come back to me and say that rub is amazing. And I still have some, it lasts a long time. I don't know how many years I've actually had this, but you can kind of see the red of the cayenne pepper here. So basically you're just gonna take, to get this rub, you're gonna take a tablespoon of the cayenne pepper flakes to a half cup of olive oil, and then you're going to create a double boiler and heat it 
to simmer for about 30 minutes, 30 to 60 minutes. And then once that has simmered, then you'll add in the beeswax and then pour, pour into these uh, tins. Before you pour, pour it, you also wanna add a few drops of wintergreen. Now make sure when you're gifting this to again, label it because wintergreen is one you want to research to make sure that it's safe for you and any indications that you might have, you or your family members. And the same thing with cayenne. But this is a very easy thing to gift. And like I said, everybody I've given it to absolutely loves it. The next one that I like to do, actually the next two has come from this book, which is called Healing Herbal Infusions. There are so many great recipes in here. With both of them, you can see I've got bookmarks in so many different places. But my absolute favorite one to do here, and I'm gonna start it with you today, is called the Itchy Bite and Sting Balm. Now we live in Arkansas, which is mosquito country and everything else that you get in the summer that can make you itch and even stings, this stuff is magical. The thing with the Itchy Bite and Sting Balm is that we're going to have to infuse the herbs for about four to six weeks. That's the recommended way of doing it. There are some shortcuts you can do, such as the double boiler method, or even I've seen putting it in a dehydrator, but I prefer to let it infuse naturally. So I'm gonna show you the ingredients that are gonna go in this, and I believe, yes, all of them actually came either from my garden or from my yard. So we're gonna start out with a quarter of a cup of dried plantain leaf. Now this, if you look it up, it's going to look like a weed. You're gonna see it as a weed everywhere. And that's one of the amazing things is that you probably have plantain and you don't even know it. Like I do with all of my herbs, I will dry the plantain whole and then I'll crush it when I need to actually use it. So I'm gonna do a light crush here with the mortar and pestle. I can grind it in the coffee grinder if I want to also, but it's not, it's not necessary to get it into a real fine powder because we're gonna be straining the oil. We just want as much surface area as we can. Okay, so we have a quarter cup of plantain and I'm just gonna put it here in this jar. Plantain is best harvested in the early spring. That's when you're gonna see it. So make sure to keep an eye out for it in the early spring. And usually by the time the heat sets in, it pretty much is gone. So for most places, you could probably harvest that through about June. The next ingredient is chickweed. And this is another weed that you probably have around your house, but it is amazing for skin. We're gonna need two tablespoons of chickweed. And chickweed can be a little bit tricky to dry. Um, so I tend to let it dry naturally, and then if I need to finish it off in the dehydrator, I will briefly, but it's very delicate. But we're gonna do two tablespoons of chickweed. And again, chickweed is one you'll find in the very early spring and in Arkansas, the very late winter. Next, we have dried lavender flowers. We're gonna be doing two tablespoons of dried lavender flowers. Lavender is not easy to grow in my hot and humid climate, but I planted them in pots this year and they actually did well. So these are from my garden, which I just love the smell. So we have all of this as dried matter. We've got the plantain, the chickweed, and the lavender, and that's it. All we have to do now is add oil. For this oil blend, we're gonna be using olive oil, coconut oil, and sweet almond oil. And it's gonna be a quarter of a cup a piece. I'm gonna start out here with the liquid one. So we'll start out with olive oil, then sweet almond oil. And this time of year, the coconut oil is in a solid state. So I'm gonna to have to melt it. If you're doing this in the summertime and you have a warm home, your coconut oil may already be liquid. And if that's the case, then you can just use it. But I'm going to be melting it here. First, I measured it out. You can melt it on the stove top. I normally just melt it on a low microwave. I had that on the lowest power setting on my microwave because I don't want to heat the oil more than it needs to be heated. And that took about, in my microwave, about 25 seconds. So I'm gonna add that. And then next we're going to add a lid. Then we're gonna shake it and we're gonna put it in a cool, dry place just to sit for four to six weeks. It's always a good idea to write the date on your calendar or write the date on here. And I would write what this is because you think you're gonna remember and then six weeks later, you're like, which one is this? So make sure and label it. 
and it's just gonna sit and infuse for that amount of time. Again, if you're in a rush and you're just seeing this and you need to get a gift done quickly, then look up alternative methods such as a double boiler, but be very careful to keep an eye on the heat of the oil because you don't want the oil to go rancid and you don't wanna destroy any of the healing properties that are in these herbs. You can get the full recipe in this book, Healing Herbal Infusions, but basically after that four to six weeks is done, you're going to strain out these herbs using a sieve of some sort. You'll need a half of ounce of beeswax and a half ounce of shea butter. You're gonna melt them all together and then you can pour them into tins like this one or Honestly, my favorite thing to do is to pour them into lip balm containers, the empty lip balm containers, because that's easy for kids to take in a backpack or for you to take traveling just to stick it in. I would recommend make sure to label it because if you put it on your lips, it's kind of strong for your lips, but it's perfect if you have a bite or something like that. This is perfect for the summer. So I like to put them in the little uh, lip balm container tubes. If you do that, you may need to add a little bit more beeswax so that it maintains the hardness that you need for the tubes. I believe that you would actually double it to um, a full ounce of beeswax if you use that. But this is a great Christmas gift idea, something that nobody's really gonna do for themselves, but they're gonna be really grateful that you did it for them. The other thing that I like to do, and this is gonna be a similar method, I love to make eczema relief salve. This is another recipe in this book. And I really like it, especially for Christmas time, because everybody has dry skin in the winter and this works wonders on any kind of dry skin issues that we have had in our family. And we're gonna be doing basically the same process. We're just going to be using different herbs. The first one is calendula flowers. Calendula is a beautiful flower that I plant honestly just for these types of things. This salve and then I use it in a face moisturizing oil. You're going to want a quarter of a cup of these dried calendula flowers. Now you can use just the petals, but if you can dry the whole flower head, a lot of that beneficial resin is actually in the bottom of the flower head. So we're gonna add a quarter of a cup of calendula flowers. Now your calendula is probably gonna be yellow or orange. I also grew a pink calendula, so either one will work as long as you've got the calendula officinalis, I think is what it is. So you're gonna add that. And then we're gonna do two more tablespoons of dried plantain leaf. You just saw that in the Itchy Bite and Sting Balm. Plantain is so good for skin issues. So we're gonna do two tablespoons of that. And again, you don't want to grind it into a powder because it's gonna make it harder to strain you want to be able to strain out all the herbs out of the oil when the time comes. And we're gonna go back to chickweed. If you're seeing a theme here, two tablespoons of chickweed. So those are the herbs in the eczema salve. And next we're gonna do the oils. We have a little bit different blend this time of the oils, but we are gonna start out with coconut oil, a quarter of a cup of coconut oil, perfect and always save these containers because you can wash them out and do like an Epsom salt scrub or a sugar scrub, and that's another gift idea. While that's heating, the next one is, again, sweet almond oil, and this one's gonna be a quarter of a cup, and apricot kernel oil. Again, a quarter of a cup. Coconut oil. And again, shake it all up, label it, and put it in a dry, cool place for four to six weeks. After the herbs have infused, we'll do the same thing as the other. We will strain off the herbs and then take half a cup of this oil to a half of ounce of beeswax and one ounce of shea butter. And we'll melt all of that together and then pour it into tins. And this is what it looks like. You can see that we use it quite a bit. You can see little flecks of the beeswax. That's totally okay. And then you've got your coconut oil that's melted a little bit there. But this is so good for eczema. Now it is recommended that this is only used for children six months or older. So make sure and do your research on this. And again, I would recommend make sure to label anything that you gift, because some people do have certain allergies to things. This is not a big deal when it comes to herbs, but there are some instances where that is important, especially with members of the Daisy family. So make sure whenever you're gifting something like that, that you label it. The great thing about all of these gift ideas, such as the salves that we just made the oils for and the herbs and the tea blends, 
is that you can use them yourself and give them as gifts. And the same is true for this final idea that I wanna share with you, and this is loofah. Now, if you're not growing loofah right now, then this may be something to put on your list for next year because it is one of the most fun Christmas gift ideas. And this is from last year's harvest. Actually, both of them are just with two plants. I had enough loofah that I'm not sure when I'm gonna to have to grow them again, but they're great gift ideas. Once they dry out, it's fairly easy to peel. And so I'm just gonna take this one here This has sat in my greenhouse for a year, so I think that's why it's taken a little bit longer than normal. Yeah, when you get the bottom, you get lots of seeds. <laughs> can be a little bit of a messy process. Okay, so we have the loofah peeled here, and you can choose to bleach it if you want a really white loofah. And sometimes the loofahs will be a little bit you know, darker depending on when they were harvested or if they got too wet at the end, like this one I think did. Um, and then some of them are, are pretty smooth like this. So it just really depends on the condition of the loofah after you harvest it. But here's the thing about gifting loofah. What I like to do is I like to cut the top off and that way it's just this uniform size. And I like to include a note with ways that they can use it because everyone thinks that loofah is great for a bath sponge, but honestly, that's not my favorite way to use it. I would say it'd be good as an exfoliator if you need that. But as far as an everyday bath sponge, it's just a little bit too rough for me. Where I love to use it though is in household cleaning, such as washing dishes, I use loofah all the time. That's pretty much the only thing I use to wash dishes anymore. And then to clean areas of grime, such as your tile or your tubs or the, your washing machine, it's very gentle in that it doesn't scrape anything, but it has just enough power to be able to clean pretty well. And so I make sure and let people know that that's actually a great idea to be able to use loofah. Now you can also use loofah in lots of different craft ideas. I've tried lots of different things. There's actually a book, I think it's called Beautiful Loofah. We'll put that in the show notes that have lots of fun craft ideas. If you really wanna go all into loofah, there's some great ideas there. But more than anything, this is a great gift because it's unique, because nobody else is gonna be doing it most likely. And it's very personal. You grew it yourself and it's just a really great unique idea for gift giving. Hopefully these ideas have inspired you to do some DIY gifts from your garden. And if you're like a lot of other people and you grow a lot of things, but you're not quite sure how to use them, then you might wanna consider my course, Harvest to Kitchen. I have a specific course just for herbs. So if you're interested in more information on how to harvest and try and use your herbs, then this might be something that you would enjoy. And it might even also be a great gift idea for someone you care about. Again, these books I will put in the description that I used. These also might be things that you might want to put on your gift list if you want to delve more into this. And I hope that these give you some great ideas for the loved ones in your life. If you like this video and you would like more ideas on how to grow and use what you have in your garden, be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.